All right guys welcome to the 7th hacking tutorial from Tech Cruise and I have got some interesting news for you guys we're making a new segment where we'd be talking about all the things that are happening in the technology industry our security industry the things that are happening for gamers and everything so watch out for that and let's get on with our tutorial so I know you guys have been fuzzing around with all the reconnaissance techniques and you guys are gathering data about your targets as much as you can now is the part for the good stuff so we're going to begin vulnerability scanning and we're going to be experimenting with a couple of vulnerability scanners but I'll mainly be focusing on Nasus because it is my personal favorite or I personally give it more preference than Nexpose or OpenVAS or even Acunitex if I'm pronouncing that right uh, just because in several cases when I'm out in the field I have seen that Nexpose won't pick up some vulnerabilities in a system that Nasus will and that is not acceptable from a <laughs> actually a very paid and a resource hungry program so I'm mainly going to be focusing on Nasus but we would be experimenting a little with every each and every one of them that I mentioned so what you guys want to do is initiate Nasus first so go to your terminal and type in slash etc slash init dot d and Nasus d and start I already have it up and running apparently <laughs> which I didn't remember so clear this out guys I want to tell you that is the directory slash etc and in a dot d has all the initialization files so it has just let's just type in ls and let me show you okay so these are all the executable files every file that appears green on the screen on the terminal is an executable so you can just like I have said before you guys can just start bluetooth from here okay I have apparently forgotten how to spell bluetooth Okay, B L U T W O T H start. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is embarrassing. And it has started Bluetooth. Let's go to and yep. <laughs> it should have been on. <laughs> okay you guys can it apparently prompted a message and didn't do what it said okay let's minimize it and open up our browsers so the next thing you guys want to do is go to https colon slash slash localhost and colon 8834 8834 is the port that nasus is listening to hit enter and it will prompt you to the user uh, web application interface of nasus so type in your username and your password Again guys if you do not have Nasus or you don't know how to set it up I will leave a link in the video description from where you can set it up and come back later and follow along with this tutorial. So let's just sign in. Okay guys so this is the screen that you are prompted to first. Apparently <laughs> I have deleted all my scans from here. So what I'm going to tell you guys is the first thing that we are going to do is create some policies. So hit policies and new policy. Okay these are all the pre-built policies for you but uh, uh, there have only been a couple of cases where these are actually any use for me because I have already I have always had to customize them so let's go to advanced scan and hit it okay so what you guys want to do is name your policy I am going to name it same as my username and the description whatever you guys want to give it see policy is the list of rules or boundaries that a particular scan is going to follow trust me you're gonna wanna make as many policies okay not as many but different policies for different needs I have a couple of policies in on my main machine so you guys want to do the same so the next thing you guys want to do is go to permissions and by default it is set to no access uh, see what permissions or this section in particular means is that the other users on your computer whether will they be able to see your policies or not so I don't have other users on my computer so I'm just gonna hit no access but if you guys do happen to have lots of users on your machine please hit can use if you want to otherwise don't so let's go to permissions now okay we are already done with permissions go to discovery okay uh, by default it has uh, ping enabled uh, it is used to see whether a particular host is up or not okay next we have is use fast network discovery if you check mark this then it's not gonna confirm okay if you check mark this and the particular host responds to the ping this is not going to cross check with all these protocols 
and uh, let me explain to you what uh, what these protocols are okay arp app is particularly used by uh, internet protocol version 4 uh, i think and not 6 to map all the network addresses to the hardware addresses used by the data link uh, con uh, data link protocol so i we've got icmp which uh, apparently stands for uh, internet control message protocol and it is an error reporting protocol usually used by routers and such to push out a particular message that says that uh, the ip packets cannot be delivered so if you take uh, take mark this it's gonna assume that okay the particular error has been reported so i'm not gonna state that the particular host is alive UDP uh, guys in my personal opinion you do not want UDP to be checked positive because UDP produces a lot of false positive because the nature of the particular protocol you cannot just uh, okay UDP just cannot say with full confidence that yes this particular port is open or not so most of the time I leave UDP unchecked so what do you guys okay fragile device okay i highly re recommend that you guys take mark these because you guys can get access to a computer or to a network using printers and these are all the files okay wake on land you really don't want a wake on land system on your machine because i have gotten a lot of trouble with wake on land but i'll tell you what it is <laughs> okay excuse me so wake on LAN is whether you guys can remotely access it or not uh, okay and uh, here you can put in the mac address that uh, it will cross check and see okay this is the same mac address as my file so i'm not i'm gonna let it use all the services so let's get to port scanning okay port scanning first option we get is consider unscanned ports are closed don't do that every port is open in your mind <laughs> okay not in your mind but uh, consider every port open and you want to see what services that particular port is running and the port scan range is default i'm just gonna put 65535 because that's the number of ports we have and the next thing is we have sh which i've already told you guys is secure shell then we have wmi uh, wmi or windows management instrument is a set of specification for microsoft for consolidating uh, the management of device and applications in a network and windows computing systems wmi is installed on all computers with windows millennium edition probably <laughs> i don't know <laughs> okay yes it is and uh, it also includes windows 2000 xp servers etc next we have is snmp which is okay what was snmp mm -hmm. oh my god i can't believe okay yeah a uh, simple network management protocol which is a popular protocol for network management it is used for collecting information from and uh, configuring network devices such as servers printers etc 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 uh, basically it binds all the fragile devices like we saw it in the other list and binds them together in a particular format you know for easy access so next we have what kind of port scanner you want to perform again don't uh, positive check this TCP because uh, TCP scan will probably and see we have put the range of 65,535 which means it's gonna try to connect to the freaking host that many times and that will probably set off an alarm so you guys don't want that always set around sin scan and would you guys like I said guys don't just uh, take mark UDP because it generates a lot of false positives okay next we have is service discovery okay probe all ports to find services yes you do want to probe uh, all the ports to find the services if a uh, particular port is open you do want to know what service is listening to that particular port next up we have ssl and uh, tsl okay ssl or uh, secure socket layer uh, okay let me just start from the very beginning tsl transport layer security which is the successor of uh, SSL secure socket layer. Uh, both of these are uh, frequently referred to as uh, SSL uh, and these are cryptographic. Uh, okay. These are cryptographic protocols that provide communication security over a computer network. Uh, several versions of protocols are widespread and we're going to be discussing all of these later on when we actually try to fish our clients and get their password while we pretend to be someone else. So, just leave it as it is and let's go to assessments okay 
override normal accuracy i would not recommend overriding normal accuracy if you're a newbie uh, if you're a pro you already know how to do that so let's go to this okay antivirus this is actually <laughs> quite tricky uh, the antivirus software check menu allows you to direct nasus to allow for a specific grace time in reporting uh, when antivirus signature are considered out of date by default nasus will consider signature of an antivirus uh, out of date regardless of how long uh, ago the update was available or how long ago the update was passed so i would recommend put it on three because <laughs> that's kind of my lucky number so smtp smtp uh, what nasus does it it tries to, okay it is a very vast tool like i said and it tries to also exploit the particular target so what it's gonna do it uh, you want to put the smtp oh shit i hit on save right <laughs> crap so let me explain to you while it is still on Okay, let's edit it. We were on discovery, service discovery, assessments. Okay, here we are. So here you want to put the service provider, the email service provider, which I will, I have accidentally put gmail or google.com. Now you, okay, from address, this is the email address you want the particular email to be sent as. So put your email address over here and put in the list of all the email addresses you want to spam. So which is actually a handy little trick if you guys want to do that, but I will probably, okay, I'm definitely going to teach you how to write a Python script to do uh, spam emails, which is actually <laughs> in my personal opinion, much better than this. So let's go to brute force. All right, guys, like I said, uh, Nasus will try to achieve or exploit the particular target. So would you, don't do that if okay uh, don't try to brute force a particular host or host uh, while you're scanning it because it will always put out a sign in and <laughs> you'll be caught trust me so don't do that but i will explain to you a little bit of this interface so what hydra does okay i have already told you what hydra does hydra is a brute forcer and here it will take okay click here add files and uh, kali has already a list of login commonly used login usernames so it will try to brute force that and password files so it's gonna take a combination of all these files and try to brute force it and gain access so that's pretty cool okay time out 30 seconds trust me uh, some tools or some services if you are very aware of that will just lock themselves down and wait for a particular hard reset if they are miss if you try to connect to them and you have a particular number of miss attempts. So, uh, okay, try empty password and empty logins. What it does is it only tries the uh, login username and what it does is it leaves the password and tries to see whether there is a password or not. So let's go to web application scanning. Okay guys, web application scanning is a whole other topic and trust me, I'll be explaining you, explaining this to you later, but let's just see what menus we have. Okay. Use a custom user agent. Some web applications won't let any scanner or crawler to access them. So Nasus will do is it will impersonate Mozilla or some other web browser. And here you guys can put the IP address. Oh, sorry. The, okay. I have forgotten what we, <laughs> okay. The URL, the URL of any freaking website or web app and would you guys, okay, if there are a lot of, uh, what do you say, target URLs, you guys can just separate them by a colon. So that's something to watch out for. And like I said, guys, it is a completely other topic. And trust me, web application scanning will be in this video, in this video tutorial series. Because many times I've seen that sometimes uh, Nasus won't yield any results that are helpful for the assessment of the particular target or I may not be able to get access to the particular target, but web application scanning always get me some decent results. So let's just switch this off and let's go to windows. Okay. This is SMB or uh, what the, what is the full form of SMB? Uh, server message block and this protocol is used for sharing files, etc, etc, etc. Let's just leave it at default and malware. Okay, what you guys see here is it will check whether a particular host has been compromised already or not. So this is actually a handy little trick if you're, if uh, a company hires you to see whether they have been compromised or uh, they have, okay, let's just assume a particular company has been compromised by anonymous or something. Okay, and they hire you 
to see that uh, whether they have done a good job sh- pushing anonymous out of their system or not so you can do a malware scan for that and see whether the particular host is still compromised or not so disable dns resolution what it does is that when it scans for a particular hash it will cross check it with the internet and see whether or not it is a malware in fact or not you guys can upload your custom md5 hashes you guys can upload your custom good md5 hashes which means you guys can uh, have particular hashes that are actually that actually seem like they might be a malware but actually are not so you guys can do that as well you guys can whitelist all the files that uh, all the files that contain the mac address and the ip address of the of your host to just whitelist them and not scan them so let me just close this as well and let's go to report report for me personally has always been just right and i haven't had any experience like to fuzz around with these settings but what i like to do is display host okay no 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 designate host by their dns name right so sometimes when you generate a report it will only show you the ip addresses and when you actually have to submit it to your client many a times you'll be surprised that the client itself is not aware of its ip addresses or sometimes the domain name or uh, the whole scope of domains is just too large to just put in ip addresses over there so this is a handy little checkbox that you might want to tick in and let's go to advanced and our last setting all right enable safe checks sure okay what it does is that it enables safe checks as in it will not try to exploit the vulnerability it has uh i <laughs> recommend that always leave it on because trust me if you are scanning a particular company on their order and you're not being mischievous or uh, you just want to scan and put out the results in front of the P, uh, hr team to just tell them that these are all the patches that you guys need to put in so <laughs> you'll bring down the system probably if there is a critical vulnerability so just always have it ticked check box checked or something and performance okay take this one because when you're scanning a large list of uh, uh, hosts or ip addresses it will probably bottleneck your bandwidth will probably bottleneck uh, your scan so just put this in so what this will do is it will not try to scan all the uh, hosts at an instant and it will just scan a particular uh, number of hosts at a time and uh, after we have created our policy let's click save guys and wait for it to finish okay we've got this let's go to scans uh okay wait policies and here we are we have our new policies guys congratulations and that's it for today's video guys if you like this video like it if you didn't dislike it if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments below i will be reading and again guys a friendly reminder a humble reminder just watch out for our tech news review or <laughs> hopefully i'll come up with a better name by tomorrow <laughs> and see you guys next time 